Hello everyone and welcome back to Solar System Tourism in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1 with Realism Overhaul where I send my Twitch livestream audience to their preferred destination, providing that they pay with the in-stream currency struts, which they earn by watching. In the previous video, we had brought some tourists over to Lunar Gateway, and this time Anonymous Pizza wanted to land on the moon, and so we're using this lander over here, which is Hydrolox lander, uh, sort of based on the Blue Origin plan. It's got BE-7 engines, it's got a stage similar to the one on the plan for the national team, except it's just a descent stage and just the Hydrolox part, no ascent stage, because the plan is to have it refuel on the surface with our ISRU rigs. So those are busy producing hydrogen and oxygen, and this will refuel at one, which means we have to make a precise landing at our existing base. You can see I've targeted the advanced ISRU lander there, and that's hard coming from a really high orbit as this was in. So, yeah, we basically end up coming straight down at it uh, just to be as precise as possible. It takes a little bit more delta V like that, but again, we are going to refuel on the surface. So I decided that it would be all right to use as much as we had. And I make a very luxurious descent down to the surface with this. Uh, Anonymous Pizza is thrilled with the sheer safety of it, I'm sure. Uh, and uh, there you can see the rigs down there. But on the way down, one of them exploded on us. Uh, we'll get to that. I don't think I uh, included the explosion in the edit. But once we get down, I decided to check the F3 log to see which one. And here we are touching down. You can see the extended radiator on one over there. And there we go, we are down. Definitely not enough Delta V to get back into orbit again. But yeah, uh, advanced ISRU lander overheated. That is a problem with the radiators in the ISRU units. But that's one that was uh, modeled by me. It was sort of integrated uh, with all the parts that the other ISRU landers had. So the ones that aren't integrated are the ones that survive. So I have to figure out what's going on with that. Anyway, I transfer the resources, the hydrogen and oxygen. You can see even this one, which is not an integrated one. This is, has the separate parts, the procedural tanks and the stock ISRU unit. Um, even that one is overheating. So yeah, it's a tricky business with these things, leaving them lying around on the lunar surface for an extended period of time. Anyway, Anonymous Pizza makes the usual Kerbal descent onto the surface of the moon and up we go and then eventually plants the flag. I don't think I've done a whole lot of flag planting in this uh, series and that flag looks all jittery. In fact I believe I made a comment about that in the on the flag plaque so the plaque text references that and we get Anonymous Pizza back up and into the cabin again. So there we go. This will be ready to lift off again. It's got the Delta V for that. And hopefully the other ISRU rigs are not going to explode. Here we have a Saturn craft as it says right there. Uh, so it's basically a habitat space for Kerbals on the way to Saturn. Uh, plenty of space on there. And I also need some landers. An Enceladus lander and a Titan lander. And so this, that's what I'm cooking up here. The cabin is from the Dynetics lander, but we don't have to have all that extra structure that the Dynetics plan had. I just put the tanks right on it because Enceladus doesn't need that much Delta V to land. It doesn't have that much gravity. So I just put the engines directly on. Well, I scaled them up a bit, it looks like. Uh, we go with the heavier engines there for extra thrust, just for safety's sake. And I went with hypergolic fuels because it's a long trip and I didn't want to worry about boil off. Now, as far as the parachutes go, I think I was trying to convert this into a Titan lander, but that... I, I, I don't remember. Maybe Enceladus has an atmosphere? I forget. I'd have to recheck that. Anyway, I definitely checked during stream to make sure that we were getting a lander that could work at these locations potentially, not that I have a lot of experience with that. But this is the Titan lander. A little bit tallish, but and it has two stages, so not reusable, descent and ascent stage separate. So we'll see about that one. Anyway, all of that gets packed onto a monument rocket with a transfer stage. And here we go with the very, very, very long launch of 
uh, Monument Rocket. So Monument Rocket again uh, has 101 engines at the, or is it 105? Something like that at the bottom. Uh, there's lots of booster engines. Those are RD 270s, and those are hypergolic. And then the core has a total of 41 M1 engines. So it's a lot. It's a lot of engines. I guess that means it's 105 engines. Yeah, 64 RD 270s on the boosters altogether, and then 41 M1 engines. And the lag is formidable. This is before I tried out using waterfall configs on it, which does help somewhat. So up it goes, and then we have booster separation. That's coming up here. And... yeah. And then what I've come to call the raise asterisk has formed. Well, will form. There we go. And yeah, the real plume plume for this engine is just weird. It is a very weird engine. It's got 36 M1 chambers arrayed in an aerospike and then five in the center to give extra thrust. Uh, so, yep. Yeah. Here I demonstrate the use of the flaps that would be used for the Aerospike SSTO version, not this version, but yeah, even the center bit has, those center five engines have little closing flaps. That would be very complicated to do, but, and don't ask me about the gaps. I mean, it's, it's possible to figure out the gaps. I, I can imagine how that would be done, but anyway. So on to the second stage, which is 13 M1 engines. Lots of M1 engines here. Hopefully they're cheap to make <laughs> because we're, we're, we're not reusing them in any way, shape, or form on this rocket. And it takes them a while to spool up to. Okay, so that's the second stage starting up. The stage after it is the transfer stage, and that's a nuclear transfer stage with Timberwind engines, and that's just a huge hydrogen tank. So the second stage makes orbit with it. Again, the Monument rocket was designed to lift an entire fully fueled Saturn V to orbit, so about 3,000 tons. So this was no big deal. Uh, so there go the fairings. We already have two tourists to Saturn on the way already. That's Lala Root and Mr. Doobie. Uh, but we had two more that wanted to go, Arthur E. King and Katak of Mercury fame. They had previously gone to Mercury and made their way back, finally. And now it's off to Saturn with them. So I get their craft into low Earth orbit first, so that's easier for them to rendezvous with the craft that will bring them there. But the thing we sent up with the Monument rocket is actually for Dalarud and Mr. Doobie to land on those planets, I think. Uh, the Titan lander, I don't know who's gonna be in it, we'll see. Arthur specified that he wanted a rotating ring habitat and so we had one from USI. I decided to see if we would just go with the Tilla thruster or try something new. There are a lot of engines in KSB Interstellar and there was this one. This uh, salt water reactor engine. Uh, I didn't know anything about it. It's, it looked interesting but it turns out that to get the nuclear salt water we have to have this salt water fabricator thing, and yeah, we uh, I didn't have any tanks for salt this nuclear salt water anyway, so I decided that, that was too much trouble. And after looking at a few other things, I just went with the utility thruster. It's safer. So that is what we have there, a massive vessel for that. And I also had to remember to the material kits that USI requires to inflate the inflatable ring portion of this. So there I am packing the material kits and enough to inflate that ring. And then we launch it in two chunks. This is the habitat portion, the forward portion of the ship being launched on the first two stages of Saturn V plus UA-1563 boosters. So these were boosters that were proposed for Saturn V, but not actually used. So up we go with those. Much power. Not a monument launcher, but better frame rate. And off go the boosters. And so the two portions of the mission were basically divided up equally. Each portion is about 230 tons. 
So that'll give you the idea of the capacity of the 705 with those boosters. There goes the first stage. I just had, had the inner stage go with the first stage instead of doing the inner stage separately. And here we have the five J2 engines and the fairings. Really, really gigantic fairings, but again, not as big as the monument launcher fairings, which I don't dare decouple in uh, while we're accelerating. Uh, we just decouple those in orbit. Okay, and here we are making orbit with this, and so that's the forward section. It does have its own RCS, just in case. And so that's ready to go, and we have to send up the propulsion section. So this is the utility thruster and most of the fuel here, and also some uh, maneuvering thrusters. Up it goes, same basic setup, again they were divided equally. And there I am checking the thrust on the boosters to see when to release them because you don't have to wait until they're completely out. Off they go. And the first stage. Second stage ignition and the fairings at some point. There we go. Alright. And we make orbit again. Pretty tightly, I mean, uh, we're definitely using all of the capacity of this rocket. Alright. And then the rendezvous, which, as you might imagine, with such big mission elements, 230-ish tons each, takes a little bit of effort. I used those engines first. They were meant as orbital maneuvering system engines, but ultimately I resort to the Attila thruster as well because we probably want these little thrusters to be used for emergencies and in this case we, we we're not in a rush so not that the tail thruster is weak or anything in fact it might have been better just to leave off those OMS engines and reserve the oxygen in particular for RCS purposes the liquid oxygen the RCS is methane and oxygen but the Attila thruster is just methane so we need the o liquid oxygen for the RCS thrusters and we've already used quite a lot of it as we approach very very carefully with these huge things. Uh, you'll see in a moment if I try and fizz warp, yeah things go weird so I don't generally like fizz warping or warping until we get within a very close distance. And then, of course, once you get into a close distance, you don't really need to fizz warp or warp, generally speaking. Though, here it probably could have helped. Anyway, here we are coming to dock, but I wish I'd been in sync with the music. Here would be, would have been a great musical time to have docked, but no, we were too slow for that. So we got this uh, sort of calm elevator music style docking instead. Anyway, we got that assembled, so we're going to have to get Arthur and Katak to this, and we're going to have to get the mission launched on the Monument Launcher on its way to Saturn as well. But with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.